Welcome to section 3, Monitoring. In this section, we will learn about CloudWatch alarms and logs, that is, what they are and how we can use them. We will learn about Trusted Advisor, what it is and its main characteristics, as well as we will learn how to enable CloudTrail hands-on within our environment. CloudWatch alarms and logs. We will learn about CloudWatch alarms and logs, that is, what they are and how we can use them. We are now going to launch a very quick instance. We're going to select using the general purpose. And we're going to do review and launch. For security groups, we can add in the security group to allow HTTP if you want to. And let's say that we're now going to go on review and launch. If we launch, let's choose an existing key pair. Let's choose the test key and launch for instance. And I'm now going to choose the test key that we already have and acknowledge that I have access to this key and we will launch a new instance. Now there are instances up and running, we can go to the monitoring tab and we can see metrics that this EC2 instance has supported in the AWS platform by default. These include CPU utilization, the screens, the screened operation, the scrites, the scrite operations, network in, network out, network packets in, network packets out, status check failed, any instance or system, CPU credit usage, and CPU credit balance. And these are going to be updated every single time a new event comes in or something happens to our instance. If we want more detailed monitoring, then we would have to enable detailed monitoring. This means that our EC2 instance is going to be pulled for new details once every minute, not the standard five minutes that we usually get. And if we want some custom metrics, for example, for us to know the RAM on our machine, we would need to create special scripts to do that for us. And they would have to run on our EC2 instance to be able to gather that data. So let's so now let's go to our EC2 instance and connect to it. I'm going to go back to my terminal here on the screen. I am in the SSH keys folder. I'm going to paste, paste this command in. Yes. As we can see, we have been successfully enabled to log in. So if we do, for example, sudo soon enough, we expect to be able to see some traffic in those metrics that CloudWatch is looking for. So soon enough, all of these will be populated. So as we can see, there is some activity coming from our particular instance. 
giving us the CPU utilization. And so you can see the sprites. And the more we use our EC2 instance, the more these um, graphs are going to be populated. But for now, I just wanted to show you uh, the monitoring page. But if we go to services and we search for CloudWatch, We're going to see that it is its own service, which monitors operational performance metrics for your AWS cloud resources and applications. And we can browse different metrics if we want to. We can see in the current health of the Amazon Cloud service, service operating normally. We can view complete health service checks for Europe, South America, Asia Pacific. And this can be quite handy to know if for some reason something got, went down that is going to affect you. You can refer back to that web page and you Preventionally, you could think about creating an alarm that is going to be triggered via CloudWatch to notify you of such incidents happening. Or you can actually build these scenarios within your application so it can become self-healing. So you can see the different Dashboards, we can create our own dashboard if we want to. And also we can use CloudWatch events to automatically invoke an AWS Lambda function to update DNS entries when the event notifies you that Amazon EC2 instances enter in the running state. Some other examples include direct specific API records from CloudTrail to a Kinesis stream for detailed analysis of potential security or availability risks. Also, you can use CloudWatch events to take a snapshot of an Amazon EBS volume on a schedule. You should think about CloudWatch events as a scheduler because it will allow you to actually specify time frame when you want a certain activity to happen, the frequency of that activity, and the days in which it should be applied. And we would create CloudWatch event rules to be able to do that. For example, we could think about building a scheduler, a scheduler for invoking Lambda functions. So let's say we can actually fix an expression to call our Lambda every five minutes or every X hours or every few days, or we can run a cron expression and make everything a bit tidier up because you can actually specify the number of days that you want this expression to run for and the number of times, and so on and so forth. It gives you a bit more flexibility. But that is it with event sources. You just create a new rule. And then you have the target that you want this rule to apply to. And then we have our CloudWatch logs, which we can see from our custom VPC log group that we created previously. We can see the events that we got in. And we can do different calculations based on these logs. We can feed the logs into a different application for further processing. 